everyone and welcome to Museums Under the Spotlight. I am Alina Dima, your host, and today I am really glad to invite you to a fabulous museum that takes us back to Roman times and speaks about the influence that the Roman Empire had to the current territory of Romania. The museum invites us to travel through different time frames, from prehistorical times to Dacian Roman Wars times to medieval times and finally to modern times. The museum called Magna Curia or the Dacian Roman Civilization Museum is hosted by an, an absolutely spectacular Renaissance palace that we are going to discover today. So follow me as we take this history marathon in order to enrich our souls. The Dacian and Roman Civilization Museum is among the most important cultural sites in Hunedoara County. The heritage of the museum is organized in four sections – Art, Natural Sciences, History and Numismatic. The exhibits on display here having great value in the national cultural heritage. The Dacian and Roman Civilization Museum, situated in the beautiful city of Deva, brings together the entire archaeological collection dating from different eras – the prehistoric age, Dacian, Roman, pre-medieval and medieval. This museum invites everyone to discover the great Dacians and their heritage for today's Romania. Ladies and gentlemen, as promised, today we are going to take a walk through history and most of all we are going to talk about the history of Romania and of its inhabitants, starting with prehistorical time, passing through ancient times and to a great civilization, the Dacian civilization, then to the Roman Empire and uh, step by step we are going to reach modern times. So together with our host Marc Antonio we are going to discover more about this magnificent history of this territory. Hello and thank you so much for having us here today and uh, to take a walk through history together. Hello, you are welcome to us and uh, we try together to do this trip. Let's talk first about the Dacians and their t uh, civilization. How were they like? Yes, uh, we know that uh, one of the main of our ancestors was the Dacians. Uh, they were uh, a great people. We know that uh, they uh, live in the actual territory of uh, Romania. Of course, uh, here in uh, Hunedoara County, it was the capital of this uh, kingdom, of the Dacian kingdom, for a uh, few decades. And uh, that's why uh, we have here a lot of uh, discoveries uh, from uh, this time. We try here to show uh, how they uh, live in, in that time, uh, what uh, tool they use, uh, how was uh, their buildings, and uh, of course another aspects of uh, daily lives in uh, the Dacian time. The Dacians were known as Geta in ancient Greek writings and as Dacus or Gete in Roman documents. It was Herodotus who first used the ethnonym Gete in his histories. In Greek and Latin, in the writings of Julius Caesar, Strabo and Pliny the Elder, the people became known as the Dacians. When it comes to their physical appearance and characteristics, the Dacians are represented in the statues surmounting the Ark of Constantine and on Trajan's column. The artist of the column took some care to depict, in his opinion, a variety of Dacian people, from high-ranking men, women and children to the near-savage. On Trajan's column, Dacian soldiers' hair is depicted longer than the hair of Roman soldiers, and they had trimmed beards. It appears that body painting was customary among the Dacians. It is probable that the tattooing originally had a religious significance. The Dacians lived in uh, tribes all over the territory of Romania. But we can talk about uh, two major figures in the history of the Dacian civilization, and those are Burebista and Decebal. 
both of them really important rulers and really important commanders and soldiers that actually managed to unite the tribes of the Dacians. Uh, tell me about them and tell me about uh, Sarmisa Jetuza, the actual capital of Dacia. Yes, Dacians were organized in the many tribes. Uh, uh, they are mentioned in the, the antique uh, records. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, Burebista was uh, the first uh, king, the first ruler who uh, unite uh, most of the Dacian tribes and uh, create a uh, big power in, in this uh, part of the continent. Uh, and in this situation, uh, he was uh, at one uh, point uh, really menace to for the Roman Empire. Uh, of course, uh, he was uh, contemporary with uh, Caesar, uh, and uh, somehow uh, they have uh, the same end uh, of their lives. Uh, after the death of Burebista, we know that uh, his uh, big kingdom uh, was spread in uh, four and uh, uh, five uh, small kingdoms. But uh, here in uh, Hunedara County, in, in the area of the uh, Orestie Mountains, uh, it left uh, the, let's say, the most powerful kingdom. Let's talk about Decebal also, another uh, important yes. figure uh, in after, Asia. After the decades, uh, another strong rulers uh, rise, uh, and uh, this was Decebal. Uh, he managed again to unite uh, most of, of the uh, Dacian tribes, but uh, it was no longer at the same dimen dimension like uh, in the Burebista time. But uh, anyway, uh, he can uh, confront with uh, the power of the Roman uh, Empire. Uh, this was uh, actually and the time and the cause uh, who make uh, who made uh, possible this uh, unification and. Uh, it looks like the Dechbal was the, the person who can uh, do this at uh, that time. There were two uh, wars between uh, Dutch and uh, Romans. Uh, we know them well uh, from history. There were bloody wars. And uh, finally, uh, the Roman Empire uh, win and uh, conquer a good part of the territory of the Dutchians. And uh, of course, King Decebal died uh, in this war. Uh, he suicide, suicide himself uh, to not fall as a prisoner in uh, the Roman hands. And uh, after this, uh, the Roman province of Decia was uh, created here. The Dacian Wars, held between 101, 102 and between 105 and 106, were two military campaigns fought between the Roman Empire and Dacia during Roman Emperor Trajan's rule. The conflicts were triggered by the constant Dacian threat on the Danubian Roman province of Moesia and also by the increasing need for resources of the economy of the Roman Empire. Trajan turned his attention to Dacia, an area north of Macedon and Greece and east of the Danube that had been on the Roman agenda since before the days of Caesar, when they defeated the Roman army at the Battle of Histria. Emperor Trajan recommenced hostilities against Dacia and, following an uncertain number of battles, defeated the Dacian king Decebalus in the Second Battle of Tape in 101. The conclusion of the Dacian Wars marked a triumph for Rome and its armies. Trajan announced 123 days of celebration throughout the empire. 
Dacia's rich gold mines were secured, and it is estimated that Dacia then contributed 700 million denarii per annum to the Roman economy, providing finance for Rome's future campaigns and assisting with the rapid expansion of Roman towns throughout Europe. 100,000 male slaves were sent back to Rome, and to discourage future revolts, legions 13 Gemina and 5 Macedonica were permanently posted in Dacia. The conquered southern half of Dacia was annexed, becoming a province while the northern part remained free but never formed a state. Since we are in the ancient times and we are talking about the Dacian civilization and everything that it implies, I believe that we should mention also their religious habits and uh, if uh, they were praying to only one god or to different gods, how were they like from this perspective? Well, uh, a lot of scholars uh, accept that uh, the Dacian religion was a polytheistic one. Uh, of course, uh, one of the most mentioned uh, god was uh, Zalmoxis, but uh, it is known for sure that uh, there are also other gods. Zalmoxis was mainly a sky god, uh, and perhaps so was uh, like uh, Zeus or Jupiter in, in Greek or Roman uh, mythology, the main uh, deity in the uh, Dacian pantheon. But uh, it looks uh, uh, that it was a storm god like uh, Kebelesis or goddess uh, named uh, Bendis, uh, which uh, was pretty similar of uh, Diana in, in Roman uh, mythology. And uh, of course, uh, we, we could see from uh, the representations, uh, few of course, but there are representations on uh, the artifacts uh, made uh, by Dacians. There are a lot of other spirits or uh, smaller deities which uh, was a, a part of uh, their uh, mythology. Moving forward now to the Roman Empire. After the conquering of Dacia by Emperor Trajan uh, during the two Dacian-Roman wars, let's see what happens to Dacia as a Roman province and uh, what further development do we have in, uh, in the history of this territory during the Roman Empire? Well, uh, what changes? There are radical changes, uh, we can see. After the territory of Dacia became a Roman province, of course not all the territory, but uh, it was uh, Transylvania and the Oltenian uh, part of Banat. In this territory too was set the Roman administration, uh, set the, the Roman life, which uh, was uh, materialize even in the architectural uh, style and uh, in the building and the, in the um, organizations of the uh, cities. Uh, I have to mention that in the Roman period, uh, for the first time here in, in uh, Dacian territory, uh, appeared the cities as, as we know from uh, antiquity. Uh, and uh, one of these was the capital of the province uh, at uh, Ulpia Traiana, Sarmis Regetusa. Uh, the capital of the Dacian kingdom was in the Orestia mountains at the Sarmis Regetusa Regia, uh, near the Gradishtia de Munte village. Uh, and uh, this was uh, near the Hatzeg, uh, on, on a lower ground. The name uh, was gift to Romans uh, in the memory of the capital of the Dacia which they conquered. And that's why they kept the former name, Sarmi Segetusa, but they, uh, this name was attached uh, to a longer name, uh, Colonia Ulpia Traiana, Sarmi Segetusa. Uh, this means that uh, it was a city uh, founded by Traian himself. Of course, uh, this, this city, this capital, was a small copy of Rome. Uh, all the capital uh, of, uh, in the Roman provinces was 
such a copy actually. Uh, so they had the Colosseum, like Rome or the amphitheater. Uh, did they held also uh, gladiator battles uh, in the in the theater? Yes, yes of course. Uh, in this city was, uh, of course, exi existed the, the main buildings uh, in in a city like this. So was the main building, the Principia, the Forum, a lot of temples and of course the amphitheater. Here of course uh, took places a uh, lot of, uh, of uh, gladiators, uh, fights and uh, of course other spectacles uh, which was organized at that time. It was like in the rest of the empire. So we can definitely talk about uh, early globalization <laughs> as we yes. have them uh, today. Kind of the Roman Empire did that before its time. A full Roman life began in the newly annexed province of Dacia, and so archaeological discoveries show that many villa rustica or farms appeared, the richer inhabitants of Roman Dacia being interested in arts and commissioning sculptures to embellish their households. Also, the Roman pantheon was fully adopted in the province, and when it comes to the funerary rituals and the crossing over to the afterlife, the rich chose the burial and the ones with less financial means were cremated. Crossing over centuries in our history marathon, we find ourselves in front of the Magna Curia Palace, host of the Dacian and Roman Civilization Museum since 1882. Since we are making a virtual tour through history, uh, now we take a time leap and we are in front of the Magna Curia Palace that hosts the museum and we are going to find out some details regarding the history of the, this palace and it's related of course to the history of the whole territory of Hunedoara County and Deva as a city. Uh, let's see, uh, when did the actual history of the palace begin? It was built in, uh, at the end of the 16th century, uh, somewhere around uh, 1570, 1580. And there, at that time, was the residence of the military commander of uh, Transylvania, uh, named uh, Francisco Gesti. At the beginning of the 17th century, in uh, 16 and uh, after 16 and 10, uh, he was a uh, gift uh, to Gabriel Bethlehem, uh, which uh, became at that time the voivode of Transylvania. Uh, and he was also com a commander of the army of, uh, course, of course, the Principality yeah. of Transylvania. Yes. Uh, in his time, uh, when he owned uh, this, uh, the old building, he uh, made uh, some important uh, transformations of uh, that building and uh, recreated it in, uh, in uh, Renaissance style, uh, but still at that time it was a building uh, with uh, only one floor. But uh, uh, then uh, he, he came uh, the most important building in the, in the uh, small city of, of uh, Deva. Tell me more about the architectural style of the, of the palace. What is the main style and what was added afterwards uh, since we are talking about uh, different uh, time frames in the construction of the palace? Yes, uh, as I said, that, uh, at the time of Bethlehem, uh, the Renaissance style uh, was, uh, uh, was represented uh, in the aspect of, of the residence, but uh, uh, few century uh, in the at the end uh, of the 18th century when the, the residents uh, come in the possession of uh, Johann Haller 
which was the Austrian governor of Transylvania. He suffered uh, radical transformations. At that time, uh, Haller uh, ordered to extend the building and uh, we, what we see now it's uh, dated from, from uh, the, this restoration. Uh, it was added a uh, second floor and uh, the four bastions we can uh, see at the corners of the building and uh, also uh, they uh, attached uh, at that time the baroque elements and uh, monumental stairs which are uh, on the side with the park, the city park. These are the mainly transformations and the last uh, of, of Magna Curia. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that you have enjoyed this history marathon with me today. And we can all definitely say that by truly knowing our history, we can build our future. A strong foundation can offer a great and bright start for future generations. So wherever we are in the world, we are all united by both history and future. So until next time, remember to make your life a beautiful story.